are these people? Let's get to C.J. Hopkins. So if everyone remembers, Mm -hmm. and we've spoken about C.J. Hopkins before, you got to probably bring it up on your screen because I don't want to. Although we're doing all right. Um, So C.J. has been prosecuted. We know, like, how long have we been covering this story? For, like, almost two years now. Um, He first got served with charges in Germany because of a book cover that he published called about the new normal where he had a surgical mask that had the picture of a swastika very faintly in the middle of it to show that they're using or what's what you you messed up my camera again you messed up the camera again mess it up again oh come on is it, is it the wrong spot again is no. it the wrong spot no i gotta like no, don't be over. Be over here. I think. How is this happening? Was, am I over? Where am I at? Over there, here. There you're at. Uh, right. How is that happening? Okay, let's let's hold on. Go. I have to go to studio mode. Know. But now we have to go to guess one aggregate, yep. and we have to change that. I just noticed it when you switched camera. Well, I'm so, so glad you did. And there we go. Get now it you're out of back. The way. Okay. Now we're good. <clears throat> All right, CJ. The People's Court of the New Normal Germany. Now, it's funny because he used the word new normal because it's the rise of the new normal Reich, I believe, is what he had originally called his piece. Um, so you see the, the, the jackbooted thug cops already standing outside the courthouse there. So, so he got sued and brought into court for a violation of speech hate speech which then got summarily dismissed in court all right right and and he won his trial like he was going to get fined and serve 60 yeah. days in prison he appealed and they and he won the appeal well they appealed to a higher court and now mm-hmm. he that or they served him with a new set of charges but he says my second trial for alleged thought crime tweeting is going ahead as planned August 15th in Berlin Superior Court. Superior Court now. Full-blown anti-terrorism security protocols will be in effect in the courtroom. Yes, that's right. The Berlin Superior Court denied my attorney's motion to rescind their special security order. So the German authorities will be putting an elaborate show of force, which everyone is welcome to attend. I'd love CJ Hopkins. He's so he's so <laughs> damn snarky. You know, he may not be right all the time, and he certainly po- wants to punch everybody in the mouth, but uh, he's he's funny. He says, uh, or actually, according to the security order, only 35 people are welcome to attend. That's one of the anti-terrorism security protocols. Also, if you do attend, you'll have to surrender all of your personal possessions, i.e. notebooks and phones, wallets, pens and pencils, and other writing instruments. I don't know what those might be. Wristwatches, hats, and other head coverings. Oof. Okay, I guess no Muslim people are going to go. And any outerwear. (laughs) And totally empty your pockets of all items. Basically, you're going to go to... You're going to get stripped naked? Uh, Down to your underwear? Is is that how they're going to... Okay. Presumably into a plastic bin like the ones they... He's very German, yeah. Use at airport security. All right, which the court security personnel will carry away and store somewhere while you attend the trial. I'm sure they won't try to download anything off your devices either. And which the superior court no. expressly denies any liability for your items. How oh, how nice. Once you've surrendered all your possessions and have been body scanned and metal detected and fo- and possibly physically patted down, you'll be admitted into room 145A where you'll have to sit in the rear five rows of the gallery behind a presumably bulletproof security barrier so that the security staff can monitor you during the proceedings. Oh, boy. All right. This is a short one. This isn't going to be very long. He says, okay, I know what you're thinking. The Superior Court security order is not at all intended to prevent members of the press from attending and reporting on the trial. No, not at all. Members of the press are absolutely welcome. It's just that they'll have to surrender their cameras and phones and their pens and other writing instruments to the security staff before they enter the courtroom. But they're welcome to attend and report on the trial. The security personnel will even provide them with pencils. Presumably those 
little child sized pencils like the ones that you get at the golf course, like when you're you know, playing mini golf, which are harder to use as Jason Bourne style stabbing weapons and sheets of paper they can position on their knees and attempt to make notes during the trial. Now I'm thinking of Men in Black. You know the scene of Will Will mm -hmm. Smith when when they when he's sitting in the egg and they're all trying to drag to the table. He scrapes the whole thing, the table across the <laughs> across the floor. You want to get down mm -hmm. on this? It's very funny. All right. Those are those are what we like to call Yahtzee pencils. Those little pencils. Okay. <laughs> sure. Right. Yeah, they come in your little cool star. cup of, Good to of see Yahtzee. You. Right. Um, right. Mm. Same go same goes uh for all you members of the public, of course. The security order is not in any way intended to discourage you from attending the trial or to intimidate or humiliate you by subjecting you to pointless security protocols. Let me close that. And well, it's going to go off all night. Come on. There it is. And treating you, you like... Windows updates? No, it's <laughs> Facebook stuff. And thank you, Fred Edward, for sharing. Yep. It's, it's a bunch of people sharing and liking and commenting, but... But we gotta we don't we don't want those. But all right. The security order, of course, is not intended in any way to discourage you from attending the trial if you're in the public, or to intimidate or humiliate you by subjecting you to pointless security protocols and treating you like suspected terrorists just because you're gonna show up to watch this thing. No, you're absolutely welcome to attend. You just might want to think about what to bring with you. Sharp objects, probably not a good idea. Likewise, Anything the court might construe to be a camera or an audio recording device, that's no, no. The security order is clear about that. There is to be no photographic or audio record of the proceedings. Why do you think that is, Reef? Well, I'm, I'm going to go with capitalism as a standard. Oh. But, you know, I'm sure there's other reasons. Like... Oh. I can't think of any. I mean, other than that, that you know, they don't want whatever's <laughs> going to be said in that courtroom by their people to get out publicly and be recorded. Yes. He says, oh, indefinitely, yeah. do not bring any state-of-the-art terrorist wiretapping technology with you. The court is particularly worried about that stuff. It's just a tape recorder. Right. Hence don't bring the, that. Hence the need to subject everyone to TSA-style body scanning and pat-downs and to confiscate their personal possessions, i.e. to ensure that no one smuggles in some sort of remotely activated wiretapping technology that will infect the judge's smartphones with some kind of untraceable surveillance software that will secretly record everything they say and transmit to Tehran or Moscow or wherever. All three, maybe Beijing. Uh, it could be it could, it could be Beijing. Uh, you probably think I'm joking, but I'm Keep not. It Keep it right? I'm not. Here's how one of the Superior Court judges justified the court's security order in his denial of, of our motion to have the order rescinded. Ready for this one? He says, I cannot mm -hmm. see the unreasonable restriction of the press and your defense that you are concerned about nor any violation of the guarantee of a fair trial. Okay. I admit that the restrictions imposed by the security order are quite significant. However, they are by no means unreasonable. They're objectively required both by the overall tense security situation, e.g. publicly announced threats of attacks against judges of the superior court. Yeah, but not, not by CJ or anyone connected to him. And the increased special security requirements in at least one criminal trial conducted in the same courtroom. Um, well, then move courtrooms. Oh, since only the courtroom in question is assigned <laughs> to the criminal division and the other divisions as a permanent courtroom, a regular search of the courtroom following every session is using suitable technology for recently introduced wire wiretapping technology represents an, uh, an objectively unjustifiable burden its introduction must be presented, uh, prevented from the outset if possible. Wait a minute. So they're already sweeping the room after every single thing, but they're still not going to let anybody in just because they they might bring it in, even though they're sweeping it, because they might then find something, but they're not going to. Uh, any, okay. Even after the strip search and... Nothing to see here. Insane. Yes, you read that judge's explanation right. 
Apparently, the court is worried that my readers, or maybe members of the German independent press, might be planning to launch an attack on the judges, presumably with their phones and writing instruments, and possibly their head coverings and outerwear, for example, their scarves, which I suppose in the hands of a of trained terrorist assassins could be used to strangle them, but who would wear scars in the nope, summertime anyway? Okay. In any event, <laughs> in any event, they clearly believe that an overall tense like, security situation exists. Yeah, because they exacerbated <laughs> everything by going after the Palestinian protesters and they clamped down on an authoritarian bro, in that, state. In that case, you can't wear sleeves or pants because trained jujitsu practitioners can use those. I told to you, you. They could, you got to wear um, like, you, you got to wear, wear like wear hoodies. A, you got to wear a singlet. <laughs> All right. Oh, you're right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. No gi rash guards is what is needed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, All right. So ridiculous. Sure. So yeah, the score. Right. So in any event, they clearly believe that an overall tent security situation exists, one which necessitates these anti-terrorism security protocols at the trial of a 62 year old playwright, author and political satirist. Mm -hmm. OK, I probably. <laughs> oh, no, he's going to. He's going to draw a cartoon. He's going to write. He's going to write. <laughs> that snark is just really Sir, biting, man. He's going to bite with that snark is what Sir, he's going to do. Drop the pin. Drop the pin and step away from the typewriter. Well, I don't want to get him in step trouble Step away yet. from the typewriter. Okay, with the keyboard, yes. Uh. Okay, I probably should have mentioned earlier for the benefit of anyone not familiar with my case, I'm not a terrorist or in any way terrorist adjacent. I'm just an author and a political satirist. The German authorities are prosecuting me because I criticized them and their COVID mask mandates. As I explained in my most recent column, quote, the German authorities have been investigating and prosecuting me since August of 2022. Like I said, two years we've been covering this. My case has been covered in the Atlantic, Racket News, News Juder Zeitung, Multipolar, and many other outlets, including How Do We Miss That?, Basically, I'm being prosecuted for spreading pro-Nazi propaganda because I criticized the COVID mask mandates and tweeted the cover artwork of one of my books, The Rise of the New Normal Reich. Here's the cover artwork of that book. The other two images are uh, recent covers of Der Spiegel and Stern, two well-known mainstream German magazines, uh -huh. which are not being prosecuted for spreading pro-Nazi propaganda, which is which... Right to jail, right away. Which is which? The Der Spiegel which one is literally like is way more egregious than this one. But this yeah. one literally is just showing that they were using those kind of tactics. But this is crazy. All right. He says, my punishment for doing that, i.e. criticizing the COVID mask mandates and not spreading Nazi propaganda has been, well... Here I am on trial again in the People's Court of New Normal Germany. The German authorities had my tweets censored <laughs> by Twitter. Just a, his photo, you can barely see anything. And it's like that their Spiegel one is just literally like, like draped, German flag. Raped in a German flag. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah, like whatever. A, sorry, I got caught up anyway. Okay. Um. The German authorities had my tweets censored by Twitter. They reported me to the Federal Criminal Police Office, which is kind of the German FBI. They reported me to the Federal Office for the Protection of the Constitution, Germany's domestic intelligence agency. My book is banned in Germany. They have damaged my income and reputation as an author. They have forced me to spend thousands of euros in attorney's fees and defend myself against these blatantly trumped up charges. And now they're going to subject me and my attorney and anyone who attends my trial to this humiliating, ham-fisted official show of force. Because they lost last time. Mm -hmm. If you're an American or a Brit or Australian or whatever, and you're thinking this is just a story about Germany or the EU, well, I'm sorry, this isn't. My case is just one of countless examples of the criminalization of dissent that's happening throughout the West. Yeah, like, Ju like Julian Assange, like... A lot of other people. Mm -hmm. Ola Binney. A lot of Americans don't realize it, but freedom of speech is protected in the German Constitution, just like it is supposed to be here. 
He says, my story is not about differences between the German and American freedom of speech protections. It is about the authorities prosecuting government critics like me on fabricated charges, banning our books, and censoring our political speech. Do we see that happening anywhere else? No? In a few places. Once a government starts doing that, um. the protections in its constitution no longer matter. You no longer deal you are no longer dealing with questions of the law. You're dealing with an exercise of authoritarian power. That's what this story is about. Any Americans and other non-Germans who've been paying attention to recent events will recognize what I'm talking about. As I've been saying repeatedly for the last four years or so, the global capitalist power system or the corporatocracy or the powers that be or whatever you name you call it, he's called it global cap, is going totalitarian on us. It dominates the entire planet so it doesn't have anything else to do. It's conducting a global clear and hold up. It's neutralizing internal resistance and any form, any and all forms of internal resistance. That means this show too, by the way. The criminalization of dissent no. is, is an essential part of that. Well, not the, the last American vagabond, anyone? All right. I've been mm -hmm. documenting this process in my columns and in my books, and specifically in The Rise of the New Normal Reich, which you can read, unless, of course, you live in Germany, so forgive me if I don't rehash it all here. The point is... Well, looks like we got ourselves a reader. Thank you, Bill, Bill Hicks. May you, rest, may, may you rest in peace. And <laughs> glad you're not around to see this shit show of an abomination. But Oh, my God. His the point, scream I could hear now in my head. His point anyway. is, we are not mm -hmm. in Kansas anymore. All the democracy and rule of, of law stuff is all over. It's being gradually, if not, and not so gradually, phased out. I get that most people don't believe that. Most people won't until it's too late. That's how these transitions generally work. Most people can't see what's coming until it gets here. I see it because, not because I'm a prophet, but... I'm just a loudmouth, and the loudmouths can get crushed first. Oh, boy. That means we're both in deep, deep trouble. <laughs> anyway. I'm in danger. Oh, my goodness. I'm in danger. <laughs> anyway, if you're in uh, Berlin on August 15th and would like to observe the People's Court of New Normal Germany in action or just get groped by a German law enforcement officer for free, the trial is scheduled uh, to start at 1030 a.m., that's, uh, that's, of course, German time, Central Europe. Meeting is on a first-come, first-served basis. I'm guessing there won't be 35 to show, but maybe. I hope so. So you may want to show up a little early, given all the scanning and screening and groping and the overall tense security situation. And here's the address. Ursulhofstrass. Yes, I've been to Munich before. And... Wallaby Way, Sydney. All right. Um... Um, support CJ Hopkins. I love him. He's an indie media award honoree, by the way, also. Um, love that guy. Even when I disagree with him, I love him. We need more cranks and curmudgeons like him and visionaries as he would deny that he is one, but he'll tongue in cheek say it. Right. Um, we support independent media. We are totally user funded. We really appreciate the people that hang out in chat. They are the people that make this network and this channel what it is. And without you guys, we don't really exist. I mean, we we do. We would do this even if it was just us. We started out just us. But, man, we really need we need all that, that support that you can give us. So we, we really appreciate that. We got that QR code up there. Uh, we talked about this last week. But we're going to have uh, the Zago Brothers create some cartoon art. They they started, they've gotten already about 15 Indie Media Award honorees they had done on this poster called Truth Tellers. Hey, how about that? IndieMediaAwards.substack.com. You can see the whole list. But um, those are the best of the best in independent media. From live streamers to journalists to outlets and video creators, we have a list with all of their links and ways to find and support them. And we're going to do something special this year. We teamed up with Zago Brothers to uh, create cartoon 
illustrations of each Indie Media Award honoree and even some people to represent some of the outlets. We were trying to figure out what to do. And uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, so that's what the Q the QR code and the Kofi is going to go towards is uh, is supporting that with, with Zago and paying him for, for his time and for his work. 